Okay, welcome back to VMworld 2013. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events to extract the signal from the noise. Um, we love VMworld, a lot of action. We just talked with the VC, Andreessen Horowitz, Peter Levine, and entrepreneurs. This guy's, it's a lot of action. We're talking to all the, the companies making that, building out cloud, delivering services. It's truly a growth market. I mean, there's so, many, so much action going on in terms of new ventures, new markets, existing markets, and new markets. It's really exciting. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host, Dave Vellante at Wikibon.org. Hi, everybody. Ted Newman is here, and Ted is a longtime CUBE guest. He's been to the Wikibon offices, and Ted looks after IT transformation for EMC Global Services, has a really good perspective on cloud, and how people, customers, are, are moving toward the cloud, some of the challenges that they have. So, welcome back to the CUBE, Ted. Good to see you again. Thanks a lot, Dave. Appreciate it. So, uh, VMworld, this is, uh, is this your 100th VMworld, is that right? <laughs> I think it's only my fourth. Yeah, but okay, cool, but you had a big session uh, Monday, I understand. Why don't we, uh, why don't we start there? What are you doing here? Tell us about that session. Sure, yeah, so uh, Monday evening, we had a session uh, with uh, EMCIT, talking about uh, vCloud Suite and uh, Puppet, working together to uh, help customers bring uh, applications that have been deployed out to the public cloud back into the private cloud. So it's, uh, it's a pretty exciting story for us. Uh, we, we did it for EMC IT. We had a number of uh, applications. Uh, we embraced cloud pretty early. We uh, built a bunch of applications for the cloud. They were out deployed on public clouds and uh, we, we found that we could save a couple million dollars by bringing them in-house uh, and running them on our own platform as a service. Uh, utilizing uh, BCAC and Puppet, so it's, uh, it's a pretty compelling story. Yeah, so let's talk a little more about uh, EMC IT, we love having them on the, the Cube and doing interviews with them. They're, they're, they're candid, they're quasi-independent, even though you know, they're EMC IT, but they're, you know, they're IT guys, right? So they, they oh, tell it like it is. Definitely. And uh, so, what was that use case? Uh, you know, specifically, you're saying you brought it back in from the, from the public cloud? What, so there was some shadow IT going on? And, and Joe Tucci's organization? No, no I no, can't no, believe no. that. It wasn't shadow. <laughs> it was, uh, so a few years <laughs> back, we actually had a mandate to, to use cloud and, uh, and to build some new applications for EMC on cloud technologies, <laughs> right? And at that time, we deployed it to the public cloud because we didn't have a, a private cloud uh, that, that had the, the capabilities that we were looking for. In the meantime, we've also made a couple of uh, acquisitions, I'm sure you're aware of, right? We're always uh, pretty acquisitive. And, and we had some applications uh, that were deployed to public cloud as a result of those acquisitions. Right. Uh, in the meantime, we were uh, doing a lot more with uh, platform as a service, both for our customers and internally. And uh, we decided to, to really go all in on that. Built out a very robust uh, uh, platform as a service offering and moved some of those uh, applications from the public cloud back into the private cloud. Save some money at the same time. So this, well, obviously we're hearing a lot about hybrid cloud. Pat Gelsinger um, was very definitive on theCUBE earlier today about uh, his vision for the, for the hybrid cloud, how it's, uh, it's, 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 in his view, the end game. You know, not a stepping stone to the IT utility. It, it is the, the future. Um, <clears throat> so a big part of that is automation. Uh, you really can't claim cloud you know, without you know, pretty significant degrees of, of automation, in, in our view anyway. So I wonder right. if you could talk about that. You guys, uh, I know, have some services in that regard. I think made some announcements recently. So uh, talk about automation and, uh, and, and automation as an imperative. Sure, we, we actually announced uh, some, some services yesterday, uh, part of our hybrid cloud enablement uh, offerings or to help customers build and automate their clouds. And I completely agree with you, in order to be able to uh, claim that you, you're taking, making use of hybrid cloud, you, you have to be automated and orchestrated to some extent. Um, and, and, and that's why we're focusing on helping our customers become service brokers, essentially, right? Uh, it helps with a number of things, being able to, uh, to consume from uh, providers, internal and external, those uh, services that you need, right? That cuts down on, on shadow IT because essentially everything's going through one place now. So you don't have to, you're, you're acting as a gateway really. So there's that, but automation's at the, at the heart of, of being able to, to do that. You can't move workloads to where it makes sense to run them if, uh, if you don't have automation. And you certainly can't get uh, the business units on board if you don't have the agility that comes with orchestration and automation. They're not going to sign up for these services uh, unless you can show them how it, it actually adds to their 
uh, their agility and it decreases their time to market. When you, t when you talk to customers, Ted, you always get the, listen, I want to get from point A, I've heard this for decades, I want to get from point A to point B with as little disruption as possible, I want to understand the business value, I want to be able to realize that business value, and I want to be able to show it back to my constituents, uh, and, I, and I just really don't want to disrupt my existing operations. Sure. So those are, those are tall orders, you know, especially when you're trying to bring in things like cloud. Um, I'm sure you hear that too. So what's, what's the secret sauce to be able to, to do that? Um, or maybe there's no secret, maybe it's just a certain blocking and tackling, but what's the game plan? So, uh, I, yeah, I don't necessarily know that it's secret. Uh, it's certainly, uh, it, it requires uh, both executive sponsorship as well as some grassroots, right? Uh, you need a group of uh, dedicated folks who get it, who are going to be willing to work on this sort of thing, and the executive support to say that this is the right way to go. We've found, and I think uh, VMware released uh, a study uh, earlier this year that said the, the greater your scope in terms of transforming operations, the higher your return on investment. Uh, so we've talked about that in the past as well, right? Go big and you're going to realize good things. If it's seen as something that the, the guys in the server room are doing themselves, the business isn't going to buy off on that. So from, from that perspective, the, the idea is you know, treat it as an enterprise program. Treat it as something that's going to help you either introduce new channels to revenue or increase your time to market and uh, get the business on board as well. That's one of the things that we did uh, internal to EMC and all of our successful customers have done that. And I know you've talked to some in the past who've said, you know, by being able to tie this to new revenue or faster time to market, we've been able to, to accelerate this and, and get everybody on board. Well, we had Express Scripts on earlier this week. I want to talk about that, but before we do, I want to just, I want to push back a little bit on what you just said, go big, um, and because you're going to get, realize more value in it. And it sounds, sounds good, sounds true actually, I would right. agree with it. Uh, but there's an element of risk to going big. So how do sure. you minimize you know, the risk of going big? It's a, th that's a great point. It's, it's all about, uh, you've got to be able to minimize risk. So you want to increase revenue, minimize risk, and hopefully reduce your costs, right? Those things, uh, there's a lot of dynamic tension in those three goals. Now hopefully, you better reduce the cost or you know, we're right. going to get yeah. chopped. Well, anybody, <laughs> anybody can do the other two things by increasing <laughs> costs, right? So right. the trick is being right. able to do that in the context or of- Or at least uh, keep the budget flat, right? At that's, least yeah. flat, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, uh, that, that's a great goal as well. So from that perspective, what we've found is if you understand what you have in your application portfolio and where the opportunities are, right? Uh, an application inventory really helps. What do I have? Who's using it? Uh, what uh, business functions are, are these applications tied to? That's going to tell you where you can actually get some bang for the buck without being super risky. And, and, and by taking this as an enterprise type approach, where you're thinking in terms of risk, revenue, and cost, uh, not just revenue and cost, you have a much better chance. So you guys, we talked about the application portfolio before, but you've got services to help people sort of assess the application portfolio, sure. and again, this is something that sounds good, sounds sensible, but it's not easy, right? Because you have a huge laundry list of applications, and you can boil the ocean on that. You, some companies have thousands of applications, so you sure. try to chunk them you know, in suites and look at them reasonably. And, and, and so what's the process like? I mean, I would think conceptually you're trying to take your costs, understand where the costs are by the application, and you're trying to understand just sort of the relative business value, you're trying to understand what business processes those applications support, sure. and you're trying to understand the interdependencies within those applications. So, a, a customer can't just hand you a spreadsheet or a piece of paper or a tool, say, oh, it's all in there, right? Or, or can they? Well, normally they hand you a guy and say, this is Tim, he knows yeah, everything, right? This is right. Tim, right. So you have, you, you have, Tim, you know, I'm going to chain service. myself to you for <laughs> a month, and you're going you know, right. to suck your brain. <laughs> so there's, there's a number of different approaches, um, and, and, and we actually acquired a, a company earlier this year called Adaptivity that gives us a great tool to, to be able to do this. That, you know, it, it ties into CMDB systems and discovery systems and that sort of thing, and allows us to get this good inventory as well as has a nice interface for the business owners to come in and say, yeah, you got this right, you got this wrong. But what, what we found is if you want to be successful, if you map the business first, you start out with, you know, how do I get revenue into the doors? And then from, from there identify the, the functions and processes and then applications, you know, that, that's going to help you really understand where your priority needs to be. Right, okay, I want to go back to your, um, 
your session uh, earlier. Um, what kind of questions were you getting from the audience? Uh, we were getting all kinds of questions. Uh, so I, that, is, that was the best session in terms of questions that I've had at VMworld, EMC World, et cetera. I think we probably got about 30. Many of them came in from uh, Twitter, so that was terrific. A lot, of, we had questions ranging from how do I get started with this sort of a thing? How do I get my executives on board to, um, you, you know, how does this change operations? Do I need to change my organization to support platform as a service? Uh, how do I get my developers on board? Uh, how do I do things like patch management, et cetera? So we had a, a wide range of questions from, you know, the very strategic all the way down to the very tactical. Did you, um, did you get any questions around, so when we had uh, Jim McBride on from Express Scripts, he was talking about this, you know, the accountability issue, the sure. contestability. Uh, did you, do you get questions like that, either in your session or generally from, from customers, and what, what are they like and what's your response? Well, I think uh, you know, one of the great things about vCloud and platform as a service built around vCloud is it gives you an opportunity to, to leverage contestability across other vCloud providers, so I think that's terrific. Jim is a, a, is a great architect, one of my favorite customers. We've worked with him a lot in the past, and um, you know, the, the concept of contestability is where I think the market is moving, right? So the idea that I can hold service providers internal and external accountable, and be able to move my workloads to where I know I'm going to get uh, the service levels and the cost and the functionality that I need, I mean, that, that's what we need to be able to build, both from a provider as well as a, uh, an enterprise IT perspective. So uh, we get asked about that a lot. Excellent. All right, Ted, well, uh, we're out of time, but thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Congratulations on a great talk. I heard it was excellent, packed house and uh, 100 plus people in there, so uh, good to see you again. Thank you very much for the opportunity, I really appreciate it. It's right. better every year. You're welcome. All right, keep it there everybody. We'll uh, be right back, this is Dave Vellante, this is theCUBE, we're live from VMworld 2013, and we'll be right back.